All right, in this episode, we break down the wild thing. And we talk about how small guys can pitch like big guys. Fred Porcio, Steve Godani here, the at Top Velocity hashtag pitch tip show, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, at Top Velocity, hashtag pitch tips, hashtag baseball tips, ask your question, we answer on the show. Um, I'm going to be in Long Beach, uh, the LBC, uh, on, this is in California, from um, or March 26th, one day camp, or one day clinic, same as the camps here, just doing it in one day. Um, if you want to sign up, still got it open, I'm going to keep it open now that it's, it's, it's on, we're happening at the Hilton downtown Long Beach and we're gonna head over to on deck batting cages Signal Hill um, which is gonna be really cool do our work uh, you know all of our throwing work there and um, if you want to sign up go to topvelocity.net velocity camps and use the coupon code 3xLB and that's gonna give you $500 off because it is a one-day camp looking forward to go up see you guys in California next week really excited um, we're also gonna be in Pennsylvania coming up pretty soon. It's gonna be in April, we'll start talking about Pennsylvania. Um, we'll be doing a seminar out there, or a little clinic out there, but uh, not, not like the clinic in Long Beach. It's gonna be even more uh, abbreviated version, bigger groups. The Long Beach clinic is a smaller group, um, more in depth, more, more stuff. Comes with that, more work for you to get you really going and having success with the programs. Um, so, let's get started. What's the question for today? Wild Thing asks, is it possible for you to break down my mechanics, coach? I want to be able to maximize my velocity. All right, Wild Thing. Wild Thing. That's an old school song. Probably you guys don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, you've Major seen League. the movie. Major League. Yeah. Major League. You know, you know what I'm talking about, but that movie's now getting old. How old is Major League now? I don't know. We used to watch that when I played in the bus all the freaking time. <laughs> um, great movie. If you haven't seen the Wild Thing, great movie. Um, so what I'm seeing is, you know, I like your little little style added, you know, kind of Quato or, you know, who could be Almost Louis Tion. Almost reminds me of Kershaw. No, Kershaw. Yeah, Kershaw does do that, doesn't he? He goes up like that. Yeah. I'm not thinking. Yeah, more like Kershaw. All right. Um, but I see when you start your movement, I like how you load your back leg. You just, <clears throat> you don't peak a lot of force out of it. So what happens is you kind of just keep loading or collapsing in the back, in the front foot strike. And then keep going. Let's see. And then, you know, and then you're waiting for hip to shoulder separation and you understand a good arm path. You don't try to fly open. You're not overcompensating a lot, but I can see you're not throwing that hard until your lower half shows up. Right now, you could go down the wrong path and start pulling your glove side, start trying to yank your arm and overcompensate, and that would be the wrong path. I'm glad you're not doing that. You need to start getting more explosive in your lower half. So coming out of those loads, you gotta be able to extend and explode like a hitter would driving hips into the front foot driving your hips into your front foot, coming through your back leg drive. You really need to get that explosive energy going, get those hips to drive through really quick, and then get you caught in a good hip, through shoulder separation. And then that should unload you well. I can see you're probably very accurate because you're not overcompensating, everything's opening up, and you're trying to, to take all your momentum to your target at that point, you just don't have a lot of momentum. So when you get more momentum and you get all that explosive energy coming out of your back leg, boom and you hit hard with your front leg and you can even push back and do it with your front leg, then your trunk starts accelerating, the dynamics start picking up, and then you start seeing some good ball speed. So you're a perfect candidate for this program. Um, we'll show you how to develop yourself explosively to be able to do that, and then we'll show you biomechanically how you get it uh, into your delivery and into the ball. So I would highly recommend you come down to camp and train with us, man. I think uh, you, you have a lot to gain from the program. Anything you want to add, Steven? Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to add, um, I don't know if it's a mobility issue or more likely a power issue or maybe even both, probably likely both, but um, just the hip uh, never gets fully through by the time you start throwing the ball. So you're never getting really good full hip to shoulder separation. The ankle's not kicking through. The hip isn't kicking through until you're already into your throw. So that's something that we would test out here. Maybe you have some internal rotation uh, deficit or something like that, some hip mobility issues. 
that you'd have to iron out along with uh, uh, adding some power to it and then really start seeing if uh, uh, when you're driving, getting a real dynamic back leg uh, and getting that full hip rotation and keeping it all the way loaded back. But it, it looks good, man. You just need uh, some more power and probably some mobility work. Yeah, I, I, I'm impressed. I like it, man. Um, keep us up to date on your progress. Let's see, next question. Jay Johnson asks, hey Brent, with me being a smaller built pitcher, five foot eight, 165 pounds, what pitcher should I study, Sonny Gray? Hey Jay, we like small pitcher questions. Um, I'll give you the list. Uh, I'd say we'll talk about, uh, of course, you know, Tim Lincecum back in the day, Marcus Stroman. Um, I mean, you're not gonna have a long list, are you? Uh, I remember K-Rod when I was coming up, liked watching K-Rod. Um, Pedro, I mean, Martinez, um, who, who else? Who's Who that Adams guy in Cleveland? I like him right now. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his first name, but at, I, I like him. Adam, oh, you can't remember his first name? How yeah, big is he? It's, it's last, he's like 5'10", but he's like 200 yeah. pounds. Yeah, you got Kelvin Herrera, too. You got, um, isn't Kimbrell 5'10"? Billy Wagner, Craig Kimbrell. Um, you know, and the hard thing with, with smaller guys is you don't know their wingspans, you know, because some of them have pretty good wingspans, and I would rather measure a guy more from his wingspan. So look for someone, if you're a stocky guy, look for a stocky guy. Like, I think Andrew Bailey is another one who's short and stocky. Um, so make sure you pick your body type within your height, and I think that's a problem. A lot of guys will go, you know, like I used to wear Steven out because Steven loves Tim Lenskin. I'm like, well, I heard Tim Lenskin's wingspan was over six feet, so, you know, Guy, you know, five nine maybe, uh, six one, six two wingspan. I think, you know, that really changed who he was. They give him a lot more leverage than it looked like he had. So just make sure if you're looking for a shorter guy, you understand. Does he have my similar build? Like, is he stocky or is he lean? Does his wingspan look similar to mine? Does he have long arms? Do you not have long arms? So make sure you're picking your body type within your height, so you don't kind of go down the wrong road. Because we use guys. The reason we you got use pro guys as an example is because if we can pick somebody as close to our build and our size, then it can be an example of a better version of us, like a fully optimized version of ourselves if we can just work up to achieve uh, their athleticism and their biomechanics. So if you're picking a guy who you think, you know, he's my height, but he's nothing built like me, that'd be like picking someone a foot taller than you. I mean, I, it really has to match body type and height for you to be, say, hey, this is a template that I can work to achieve to, or this is a better version of myself, that if I can just achieve their athleticism, their biomechanics, then more likely I'll have their success. Um, make sure you, you pick both of those. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add to it? Yeah, I know you threw in some oh, yeah. um, examples. Anything you want to add to that? Um, but he said he's like 5'8", 160. Five, yeah, one, two, yeah he, he sounds like Tim Collins to me. So. Or Tim Collins is another one, yeah. Yeah, and that's a great story online, but credit by Eric, uh, Eric Cressy for, for that development. But uh, Austin, uh, Austin Fisher in our program and Cage Cascone, two smaller guys who got to 90 through our program. Um, you can watch their interviews. Um, but not, not, you know, that's just the way, that's reality. You're not going to have as many little guys doing it as big guys doing yep. So. But there's a lot of great examples out there. It's not impossible, right? Mm -hmm. But it's just, it's harder. You don't have the leverage. So, yeah, find a guy, Jay, that you feel like not only is my height, but he matches my body type. And uh, I think that'd be a good example for you to work towards, or a good idol for you to follow. You know, I had my idols. I think it's important to have your idols and really try to, you know, compete with them. Look at them as you want to be on their same level one day. Also, though, not just putting it towards like just idols and being like, yeah, I want to be like that guy. Also understanding how, how they're doing what they're doing. So smaller guys in any sports, when you don't have the limb length that other guys have, like taller guys have, um, you need to make up for it with disproportionate strength. So pretty much that means like guys like Nate Robinson in basketball. How can that a guy that small jump that high? and dunk or how can uh, uh, Tim Collins in baseball uh, keep up with the guys who have longer arms, taller taller bodies and really the answer is um, disproportionate strength to their body size. You just need more more strength um, than normal guys would need and then you need to turn that into power. So um, that's something that you would have to keep in mind that hey if I want to be uh, a high 90s guy or something and I'm 5 foot 8, 160 pounds 
to be a guy who's, you know, just built my leg strength and leg power and just overall athleticism to a, a level uh, that's going to um, be disproportionate to what other guys are, are doing who are bigger than me. Good. That's our power to weight ratios. Get yep. them high. All right. Good question. So if you have a question, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, at Top Lossy, hashtag Pitch Tips, hashtag Pitch Tips. Ask your question, answer on the show. Don't forget about Long Beach. And if you want to come down to camps this summer, we got a lot of great slots again, 2X camps coming up, but people are filling up and they fill up quick. Our people register and they fill up quick. So register ASAP and we'll see you down here.